Collective, Black Talk Media. The views and opinions expressed by the guests, listeners, and hosts of any program on Word Radio do not necessarily reflect those of the ownership, management, or advertisers of this station. Uh, I'm, I'm simply saying that life finds a way. All right, people, write something on the board. Let's spell it. First letter. L. O. What's that? What? It's time. It's time to have real, honest, open, difficult, and inspiring conversations. It's time for Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. Well, hello there, family. Welcome to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. You know, that's WURD radio.com. I'm so glad to be here with you. As you know, I am. You all know that I'm typically on 10, and today is no different. I hope for those of you whose light is shining just a little dimly today that, um, that it gets a little brighter quicker. And you know that the road to it is easier. I'm sending you all the love and hugs that you can handle in this moment because I need you and want you to know that it will get better. It always gets better. It does get better. It will get better. Uh, So, oh, it felt so good to just exhale on this Wednesday, April 5th. I cannot believe it. We're already in April. I feel like we just said, you know, Happy New Year. That's what I, I really do feel that way. <laughs> I'm sure you do too, right? Well, some of you do. Some of you are probably saying it feels like December already. But I know how that goes too. <laughs> so listen, you all have heard me talk about, uh, you know, some of the things that I do in life. You've heard me talk about working with my babies, working with children. I know some of you are saying, look, I know you and you don't have any babies. I do not have any biological babies, but I do. I do claim your babies, okay? Because I've had the pleasure and the privilege of working with different programs uh, that bring music education into the schools, into different organizations. And I found it necessary. I said, I just have to have you meet this extraordinary guest today that we have on. She is the executive director for Musicopia, an organization geared toward assisting youth in learning how to read music, play instruments, and so much more. It's one of the instru- uh, one of the instruments, one of the organizations uh, with which I work, and I've had the pleasure of doing so. Um, for quite a while now, you know, you'll hear me tell you some stories of my babies. You will, if you haven't already, you definitely will. In any event, our guest today has served as Musicopias and Dancing Classrooms Philadelphia, or Dancing Classrooms Phillies. <laughs> Grants and Corporate Development Director from 2017 through 2020. She has a deep passion for the arts. And I'm telling you this because I know her, not just because it's written on paper. She definitely has a deep passion for the arts, music education, and their impact on creativity, joy, and the quality of life. And she has helped to create multiple community concert series and speakers forums. Okay. I'm, I'm, you know, the list goes on and on. Family, I invite you to meet Catherine Marie Charlton. Catherine, Catherine. <laughs> How <Hello>. are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm especially good because I have my Carol Riddick hug in a mug with me tonight. 
you know what was so funny? I started to to make my tea and have some too. And then I said, wait, I can't have any tea right now. I might spontaneously combust because I'm, <laughs> I refuse. I just put a fan on. I know you guys are, you know, it's, with the it's really, really warm. It's warm. God, I am not complaining. I am not complaining. I need you to know that I am not complaining. Just recognizing and acknowledging that it's exceptionally warm today. <laughs> but it's a I good thing. Laughing. I was like, I hope I'm not too fancy. Because you know, as a performer, we have the fancy schmancy clothes. Right. And then we have the workout clothes. Right. Right. And then I was like, okay, all my in-between clothes are like winter. Yeah. Trust me when I say between that and trying to fit into things, because I've had the appetite of I don't know who in the more recent past. Um, I was trying to work out what to wear today. I would like to acknowledge our friends on our socials. Hey there, Gary. Gary Bryant is saying, hey, good evening, Queen. I received that king. Good evening to you. And thank you for joining joining us. We're so happy to have all of our family members come and spend some time with us. And you know what? While I have uh, your attention with recognitions, I should let you know that we welcome you uh, to call us, talk with us, and join our conversations. Yeah, let's, let's all talk about everything. You can do so by calling 215-634- 8065. Or you can call us toll free at 1 866 361 0900. So back to you, Catherine. Catherine, uh, first of all, thank you. Thank you for coming to spend some time with us. You know, as you heard in my introduction, to the show, I, I want our family members to be familiar, those of those who are unfamiliar with Musicopia and Dancing Classrooms Philly, because I I think both are extraordinary um programs. And I, I mean, I've listen, you know, I tell you about my babies, and I've met babies from all over, from all over, and they love, love, love what they receive from both. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about you first? about me. Well, first of all, I am deeply honored. Thank you. Carol. Oh. <laughs> it, it is an honor and congratulations on your new time slot and live. Thank you. It's, it's amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, what do you want to know about me? <laughs> well, for our family members are unfamiliar. See, I know okay, you, so, but our family members yeah, don't. So yeah. tell us from where you come, you know, where, where did yeah. you grow up and yeah, so I I actually grew up in Virginia, outside mm -hmm. of Charlottesville, mm -hmm. and I started playing the piano when I was about eight. So okay. I had recorder in the fourth grade, which hopefully <laughs> many of our audience had an experience like that. But this is one of the reasons why I want all kids to have this experience, because it was that little plastic recorder in fact, I actually even have one over here. Um, the little plastic recorder that mm -hmm. was enough to show that I had this passion for music and that I had oh. this knack for it. And my mom recognized it and said, you know, we need to get her a piano. Um, and we found a piano at a yard sale. Oh, that wow. was 80 years old. And my dad was an inventor and he actually rebuilt the soundboard. Um, and... Okay. I never knew that. Yeah. And I'm sharing it because, again, it feeds into the Musicopia story and why I'm so passionate about it. Because as we'll talk about later, one of the things that we do is um, uh, we gratefully accept instruments that people are willing to to hand mm -hmm. on to the next generation. So that experience of playing on this beat up 80 year old piano was completely out of tune most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't care because it was my voice. It was the way that I could express myself. It was the way that I could get out what was I was holding inside. And I mm -hmm. didn't really have necessarily a safe environment to express um, that. And so the sure. music was this beautiful place that I could be. Well, Catherine, let me ask you this. I want to go back to something you said. You made mention of a recorder. Some mm -hmm. of our family members are unfamiliar would you explain what a recorder is? Sure. In fact, let's see if I have it. I was just looking at it the other day. <laughs> Where is my recorder? Oh, Because oh. some of us may be thinking a tape machine. You no, know, that, no. that's what I refer to a recorder as. I have my... <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> There's your recorder. Okay. And I made a big mess and a big noise. I apologize for hurting your ears. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's a little <laughs> plastic flute that you play through the end. Mm -hmm. So that was your first experience. That was with my first an experience was a plastic instrument. Yeah. It's and so actually, cute. it's amazing what you can do with these. And actually, um, a lot of our Musicopia programs um, are starting to use plastic instruments as a way to get the kids to experience mm -hmm. what it feels like to hold something in your hand. What does it feel like to make a noise um, and be able to change the tone and, and control something with your breath? And I, I love that you're telling that, you know, because uh, um, in some of the schools, in which I've worked, there have been recorders, and and you are absolutely right. It um, it gives them such a wonderful opportunity to experience an instrument, and in a lot of cases, it is the first instrument that some of my babies have experienced. Mm -hmm. So they love it. They always say, "Miss Carol, can we play the recorder? Can we play the recorder?" Yeah, uh, and I was eight when I got mine, and that's actually. Like in the grand scheme of things, mm -hmm. eight is starting to get a little older for a traditional path for getting into music. Um, and I would say that a lot of the schools that we're in, the path is not traditional whatsoever, mm -hmm. right? Agreed. Um, yeah. So any way we can get instruments into kids' hands, um, get teachers uh, in, such as yourself, um, you know, and we can go into more depth about what those programs look like and so forth. But that, mm -hmm. that's what it's all about. It's about sparking an interest and a passion. Yeah, I'm glad you said that um, because, the you know, one of the reasons that I invited you to come onto the show is, like I said, family, Musicopia is amazing. It is an amazing program. And I've seen, you know, my own children benefit from it. Mm -hmm. I keep now. Wait, I know. I know. I know somebody just said, wait, huh? She doesn't have any they kids. Just tuned no, in. She, if you just if, tuned in, she'll exactly, explain again. <laughs> exactly, exactly. For my family members that have just joined us, you already know. You are tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and on line at wordradio.com. That's W-U-R-D radio.com. And if you just heard me talk about my babies and my kids, you know I don't have any biological children. I'm talking about the children with whom I have the pleasure and privilege to work. Um, and I do so by working with programs that provide music education to young adults. And one of the programs with which I work is Musicopia. So I asked Catherine to come here today to talk about, to talk about her self, but also to talk about Musicopia, to talk about dancing classrooms, Philly, to let us know a few things. When I tell you, I'm telling you, I experienced so much joy watching our babies ball, do ballroom dancing. I when I now listen, I know you're saying, wait a minute, black kids don't they don't yes, they do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And our babies love it. Our babies are cultured, our babies are learning, our babies are doing a lot of new and different things. And I'm saying new and different because I didn't have the experience to do ballroom dancing when I was a baby. I, it wasn't something to which I was introduced until you know, much later in my adult life, but I love seeing our babies. I mean, from everywhere, you know, compete in, in the uh, ballroom dancing competitions and enjoy it. They yes. enjoy, they love it. They love it. I want to take a moment before we continue our conversation to say hi to Joanne. Joanne Dorman, how are you? Good evening, Queen. Good evening, family. Those of you who are joining us on our socials, we're so happy to have you with us. We're happy that you are here paying attention and participating in the conversation. But you know what? You can talk to us, too. You can do so by calling 215-634-8065. Or you can call us toll free at 1-866-361-0900. So, Catherine, you said you were born in Virginia. How'd you get to Philadelphia? Ah, I actually came right out of college. Um, I came to the area to work for a credit card company in Delaware, <laughs> of all things. Okay. There are a lot of them in Delaware. <laughs> um, and that was a while ago, more years than I care to share. Okay. <laughs> but it was um, 
Philadelphia became my love and my passion because this city, the arts here mm -hmm. is just extraordinary. The, the, how it opened up my own musical exposure and, and awareness and love for, um, you know, I came from a training of a, a Western classical music training. Mm -hmm. um, and I came to Philly and I was going to Sun Ra concerts, Marshall Allen and Elliot Levin, you know, blowing mm -hmm. the sax in this extraordinary <laughs> wall of sound. And I, was, I had no idea what to think or, I mean, it would just completely opened up my um, experience and my love for all kinds of music. And I think while we're a big city, uh, we're small enough that the music community in particular is tight knit mm -hmm. and um, really loving. And it's just been a joy. So how did you get to, well, first of all, I want to let our family members know by way of your explanation what music copia is. But before that explanation, I want to say hi to Harry. Harry, hey there, joining us on our socials. He says, good evening. What good did evening. I miss? Harry, I'm going to tell you what you missed. Well, our guest this evening is Catherine Marie Charlton, and she is the executive director of Music Copia and Dancing Classrooms Philly. And I was just talking about our babies having um, opportunities to experience uh, music on another level, having instruments that they've never seen or played before. And I uh, have actually seen this happen because I, I work with Musicopia and it's such a pleasure. So Catherine is about to explain to everybody what Musicopia is since I've said it about 20 times. <laughs> yeah, so Musicopia, we actually are approaching our 50th anniversary wow. next year. Um, it was founded in 1974 by a string quartet of women, um, a classical string quartet, um, who saw that the arts were starting to be cut in the schools and wide, widely. And mm -hmm. it was um, something that they felt extraordinarily passionate about making sure that no child would go without music. Um, and they took it upon themselves to start um, coming into schools. And the mission mm -hmm. always was to come to the schools in the neighborhoods where the arts were being cut or um, that there was not the opportunity for the arts um, the way there were in the suburban schools. Um, mm. It really was focusing on the urban neighborhoods. Um, and it grew from there. In the 90s, Musicopia really expanded into a global roster of musicians where um, we're bringing perform professional performers who are uh, performing music from all over the globe. Mm -hmm. um, Afro-Cuban music, Bollywood dancing from India, um, folk music from the Gulf Coast of Mexico, Brazilian percussion, um, recycled sounds where the kids are making their own instruments. Um, and it really became the focus of global awareness, mm -hmm. um, so bringing new experiences through the arts um, to the schools. So how do you, um, how do you determine uh, the programming and uh, the artists that will work in the actual I should say locations, because I'm not sure. Is, is it just in schools? Is mu Musicopia just in schools? Historically, or? we've been in schools. Um, in the past couple of years, we've been expanding more into community programming. Um, but our traditional model has been where we bring an artist into a school. Um, two different types of school programs. One where an artist will come in and give a full-blown performance mm -hmm. um, in an assembly program and then work with smaller groups of students, learning more about that culture, more about the music, tying it into their classroom studies. Um, and then the children get to perform at the end of that um, mm -hmm. for their school. Um, and then we also have teachers such as yourself who are coming in and working with your babies um, <laughs> for longer time. Um, focused on general music education, focused on learning how to play an instrument. We'll come in and supplement a band program, for example, where the school might have one band teacher. Well, we'll send in teachers to help uh, teach all the different instruments in the band or the orchestra. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have after school programs um, as well. You were about to ask a question. I know I, what I was about to say was that, you know, I, I love, Everything that you've just explained, I'm telling you, 
you have no idea what it does with and for our kids when you see our kids experience different instruments for the first time. It's a beautiful thing. It is such a beautiful thing, especially when they get to hear, it, you know, when they get to, to experience them themselves, touch them, feel them, play them. It's a beautiful experience. Family, if you have just joined us, you're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. Com. You know, that's WURDradio.com. Listen, we're going to take a short commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to continue our conversation with Catherine Marie Charlton of Musicopia and Dancing Classrooms, Philly. Stay with us because we'll be right back. This is not a fad for us. We will not resume our regular programming when things die down. We're not black to help our bottom line or because it's politically correct. We're not joining a fight. Joining a fight. This has been our fight, our message, our people. Black lives have always mattered here. We are undeniably, indefatigably, unapologetically, permanently black. Talk Media. W-U-R-D. I'm over 65, and that's why I'm a booster booster. Data shows COVID-19 hits seniors harder. Why risk it? The updated boosters offer the best protection against serious illness from COVID-19 and its variants. If you're over 65, get boosted. Protect yourself and protect others. It's free. It's easy. And while you're at it, you can get a flu shot. Learn more about the updated boosters at covid19.newjersey.gov. Did you know Henry Oswa Tanner, the first internationally known African-American painter, lived and studied right here in Philadelphia? As the first Black student admitted to the prestigious Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts, Tanner broke barriers with his innovative moving paintings and influenced generations of artists around the world. To find out more about the efforts to preserve his legacy and North Philadelphia childhood home, visit thetannerhouse.org, a message from the friends of the Tanner House. Experience what the New York Times called movement as communal celebration when Step Africa comes to the Kemmel Cultural Campus, the first professional dance company dedicated to the tradition of stepping. This award-winning group blends percussive dance styles from historically African-American fraternities and sororities, traditional African dances, and an array of contemporary art forms into an exhilarating experience. The technique, agility, and pure energy makes each performance unique, leaving audiences energized and on their feet. Step Africa, one night only, Friday, April 28. Get your tickets now at chemoculturalcampus.org. You're listening to Love and Life with Carol Riddick on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. Hey there, family. Welcome back. You're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. You know that's wurdradio.com. Thank you for staying with us, and thank you for those of you who have just joined us for coming to the party. Um, Raphael, hey there. Hey there on our socials. And Miss Rosalind, how are you, queen? It's so nice to have all of our family members spending some time with us. We are joined this evening by Catherine Marie Charlton. She is the executive director of Musicopia and Dancing Classrooms Philly. And for those of you who missed um, what she just shared, I was also adding to it by saying that um, I work with Musicopia and I get to go and, and work with our babies. Our babies are learning music. At, I mean, when I tell you some of these babies are teaching me some things, it, 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 it tickles me. It really does tickle me. But it's amazing because they're having these new um, experiences. Some of our babies don't have experiences with instruments at home. Like I didn't grow up with an instrument in my house, but I love music mm -hmm. and it's my passion. Um, so, so, so Musicopia is giving them that opportunity. And I think it's awesome. I think it's a wonderful thing. So 
when you decide about program, how do you determine programming for the different schools or the mm -hmm. So you also asked how we choose the teachers. So mm -hmm. I'm going to start with that. Okay. And first and foremost, the most important thing is that our teachers have compassion and understand that the music is the vehicle for bringing the global awareness, as I said, um, but the the joy and the dedication and the the self confidence and um, and really being passionate about wanting to bring that to children. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's first and foremost. Um, and also, it's of utter importance that we have um, music from cultures that the children might be hearing in their homes or mm -hmm. in their neighborhoods, that they're meeting teachers who look like them, that they have someone to look up to, um, compassion being the very first thing that we're looking for, but all of those things that we're making sure that we have an offering of programs that the schools need and mm -hmm. that the schools want. Um, and we ask all of our teachers to bring recommendations for what they want to teach. So they'll be teaching their own curriculum. Um, and then we curate our roster so that we have a wide variety of programs um, not only across all different types of music, but across, I mentioned before, the classroom tie-ins so mm -hmm. that we have, um, for example, Christian King does a program called We the People, where he's teaching the kids rap um, in the style of Hamilton, and the kids mm -hmm. are learning about American government through that program, mm -hmm. um, right? So we want programs where the teachers, um, it makes the teachers' lives easier also that the students are learning more through music that complements what they're um, also teaching in the classroom. You know, I want to share a story with our family. Um, there was a school at which I was working. This was some time ago. And um, I was trying to figure out a way to reach my babies. I had, I had a lot at my disposal. I had keyboards. I had a guitar. I had bass. I had trombones, trumpets. And I had one baby, one baby, nothing, nothing. There was not one instrument that spoke to him. And he was dealing with, he was dealing with some things. And um, Musicopia also offers programs like some of the, um, well, this one in particular was bucket drumming. Leon Jordan Sr. came in to teach bucket drumming. Leon Jordan Sr., whom we love and adore. Thank you. He came in to teach bucket drumming, and that was the one thing that spoke to my baby. He, that was it. I mean, when I tell you, and I'm saying this to you all because sometimes, we, you know, we have our... We, we're talking to our babies and we're watching our babies deal with things and we don't know how to reach them. And we all have. Listen, we all have idiosyncrasies. We all have something, you know, and this one particular baby um, had a trigger that I just did not know. I was unaware of how to figure out how this, this, this one trigger. But he began to talk with me when he learned bucket drumming. Wow. It was through bucket drum. He, he would not talk to me prior to, but then he said, Miss Carol, will you play with me? And we played and then he would want to compete. And, uh, you know, um, he would say, can you do this? He would want to teach me rhythms. But as a result, he opened up to me and we began to talk and it, would, it was smooth sailing from then. But I'm saying all of this um, to say Family, we all say all the time that music is a universal language. We say it all the time, but it's a beautiful thing when you experience it, when you when you actually see it happen, you know. And uh, I can't say it enough. Musicopia does that. It gives the opportunity for that. Yeah, that's extraordinary, Carol. Um, I, I think also that act of creation opens up channels. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. opens up the energy channels um, and it's that saying yes to the world. Yes, I have this flow in me. Um, mm -hmm. That's really beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Well, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to experience that. You know, as I said, like it had it not been for music, had it not mm -hmm. been for music and and identifying which instrument it was. Um, that would allow him to express himself because there were some of my students who preferred keys 
And, and, you know, so what I did was I would, I would change my programming so that I could accommodate as many of them as I could. You know, I always tell my kids, okay, we work, then we play, we work, then we play. So, you know, I say, okay, as long as we get the assignment in, we can play. So as a result of that, they became interested in getting the assignments done and they were also interested in knowing, okay, so what are we going to do today? What are we, what are we, what are we doing today so I can learn it, so I can do it, so I can get through it, so I can play? <laughs> Which is a cool thing, too. It, it's always funny. Now, talk to us about dancing classrooms, Philly, please. Yes. yes. Okay. So dancing classrooms, Philly started in New York City. We're a, an affiliate of the dancing classrooms program started by Pierre Dulane in New York. Mm -hmm. um, there are two pretty big movies that were made about it. The one was Mad Hot Ballroom, which is a documentary about the um, program in public schools in New York City. And then the second is Take the Lead, starring Antonio Banderas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he stars as Pierre Dulane in that. Um, and so that program was started in the 90s in New York City, and it's using ballroom dance mm -hmm. and the elegance um, and the partner interaction that is intrinsic to ballroom dance mm -hmm. to help the students go on a journey. Um, when we go into a school, it's typically fifth grade or eighth grade because those are very transitional, transformational years, especially mm -hmm. the fifth graders where they're starting to get the higher level um, thinking, critical thinking skills, but yet they're still child's children, right? Children, yeah. um, innocence. There's still an innocence. So there's this really interesting mix of that. Um, but we'll go in to a school and an entire grade participates. So we'll go in and it is a requirement that everyone in the fifth grade participate so that they're all in it together. Um, and if for some reason they can't dance, they'll be DJs or they'll, mm -hmm. they'll participate in some other way, but they're still experiencing the program. And they're um, going through this journey of learning how to look each other in the eye, um, how to touch each other, um, how to work together, how mm -hmm. to work with a partner. When you move, I have to move, otherwise you step on my toes, <laughs> right? <laughs> so it's all of that interaction um, with their partners and with their peers um, that really takes them on this really amazing journey. I keep saying that word, but it, it truly is the power of that program. Oh, it yeah. is. Uh, you know, I've seen it uh, again. Here I go, family. You hear me. Uh, but I had the opportunity to witness. I, I was at one of the competitions and it was a beautiful thing seeing our babies compete, um, but compete. It, it, they had, there was such an etiquette. Um, their stylings, their communication, the way they moved, the way they handled one another. It was so, it was so much, there was a maturity to their movement that I really appreciated and adored. When I tell you, now y'all know, y'all know I'm one big teardrop. I cried at the end of it because I wanted everybody to get a ribbon. I wanted everybody to win. I was like, and somebody said, a friend of mine said, well, they can't all be the way. I said, yes, they can. Yes, they can. But, but I had to come to appreciate that too, that everybody could not be the winner. Everybody is a winner, but everybody could not yeah, be Yeah, and I have to winner. tell you though, yes, in the moment, it's very emotional. Uh, and uh, as an aside, I think all of the network is is starting to have conversations about whether or not we leave that competition piece mm -hmm. in there. But that's th such a interesting, different dynamic uh, for the performance when there is that competition piece. But I have to say, um, I remember uh, one um, school, Walnut Street Elementary in the William Penn School District, mm -hmm. um, the, they had been wanting to do the program for years. Um, we finally were able to get them in and they won the silver ribbon. Mm -hmm. When they went back to their school, it was like the Super Bowl championship parade. Every kid was lining the aisles, cheering, like all the kindergartners and first graders and second graders were cheering for all of the fifth graders who had just done this amazing thing. They oh, put themselves it. out there. Right. Like that experience of putting yourself on the line, that courage and vulnerability to do that. Um, 
braver than me. Yeah. Well, listen. Yeah, you know, <laughs> they were awesome. Yeah. They were awesome. And the discipline, though, let's talk about the discipline because these are these are kids. Let's talk about the discipline that they display. It's an amazing. It, I keep saying it, family. Listen, if you've just if you've just joined us, you're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media on air and online at wordradio.com. That's WURD radio.com. I'm saying hello to all of our family members on our, joining us on our socials and to those who may want to know some questions who may want to know some questions you hear me who may have questions that i have not yet asked i can't talk tonight i don't know what's going on with me you can call and ask those questions and you can do so by dialing 215-634-8065 or toll free at one 866 Three six one zero nine hundred. I think what I must do is slow down because I'm talking too fast. I think. Girl, I think you is. need your hug and a mug. I do need my this hug and a mug. Hug and a mug. <laughs> it is. That's my mug. <laughs> so now I was saying, uh, I'm, you know, made the statement about Musicopia. I want to go back to Musicopia, mm -hmm. and I said that Musicopia was in the schools. Is it just in the schools? Is it? just in our school system, is mm. it? So um, we, no, not anymore. Um, but but historically, that's where we've been. So the last um, 10 to 15 years, we've been expanding our after-school programming. Uh, we have 13 and growing drum lines in the city, um, including a partnership with West Powelton Drummers and Steppers uh, out of West yes. Philly. That is everyone's favorite. Yes. Uh, we partner with West Powelton and Antoine Mapp um, the director of the Sixers Stixers, um, because he's teaching um, 150 kids uh, every year. Uh, we support his youth programming. So mm -hmm. we're helping support um, the teachers and the coaches who are bringing up the next generation of the West Powelton drummers. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also are able to hire all of the coaches from West Powhatan to teach throughout the network. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, which is bringing an extraordinary um, richness to the programs, as you might imagine. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have a, a string orchestra that draws from 30 different schools around the city. And, oh, wow. Yeah. And, and most of the kids in that string orchestra come from schools who don't have orchestra programs. Um, and we have a Musicopia bright red van where we're driving around to the schools and bringing kids to rehearsals. Um, yeah. You know, and I wanted to, I'm glad you mentioned that because I know some of our family members, listen, I know what you're thinking. I know you're saying, Carol, why does Carol have this woman sitting here talking about this? What, what, are, what? No, 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 no. I want you to know it's because these programs that are offered by this organization are programs, uh, that our babies can and are benefiting from. They are wonderful, amazing programs. And you might have a niece, nephew, grandchild, a child of your own thinking, well, you know, I would really like for my child to learn drum, drum lining or how to play drums or how to play mm -hmm. piano or something else or, or to have an experience with an instrument that you're, they just have not yet had. And I want to tell you too, um, as a result, we identified one of my babies, a young lady in one of my classes, she was extraordinary on the drums, extraordinary. So much so that Leon Jordan Sr., who is a drummer that we all know and love, he called Musicopia to get her a drum set. Mm -hmm. which I think, and this is why, this is why I'm telling you, because our baby, some of them have natural born talent. And this young lady did, this baby did. She was, she really was, she was exceptional. Um, she was a natural born drummer. And, um, and, and I, I, I identified it, but when Leon came, he said, did you, I said, exactly. Did you hear her? And as a result, he called Musicopia. They he called her you know, our family and worked it out. So I'm saying this to you family, because a lot of our babies could really benefit. You know, a lot of our babies are born with a natural talent for music and for playing different instruments, some instruments with which we are unfamiliar. I mean, yeah. I, I'll tell you, I wasn't familiar with a recorder 
until I went into one of my schools. I didn't even have that. Okay. But yeah, there you have it. There you have it. There, thank you for those family members <laughs> that just joined and are saying, what is a recorder? You Because I thought when someone first said it to me, I thought they meant a tape recorder. I mm -mm. I said, now, what does this do? What are we doing with it? And you keep dropping that thing. <laughs> Every single time you touch it. Anywhere. <laughs> Every time you touch it. Family, listen. Well, you know what? Um, I should just turn it into beats. It, 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 there you, know? you have because, it. Because there you have that, it. it's all about the creativity. It's all of, you know, who cares about what it was intended to do? <laughs> right, right, right. Family, listen. Stay with us, okay? Because we're going to take a, a short commercial break, but we will be right back. <laughs> This WURD public service announcement is a reminder that every voice and every vote counts. We are committed to keeping you informed and we encourage you to participate in the process. This is Charles Ellison, host of Reality Check on WURD. If you're a Philly resident who is already registered to vote or wants to register, where should you get more information on next steps? All Pennsylvania voters should visit votespa.com on how to register, key deadlines, and where to find your polling location. Philadelphia residents can also go to philadelphiavotes.com for more information and to reach the Philadelphia City Commissioner's Office. Keep following us at One Word on Twitter, facebook.com slash four word, and hashtag word on politics for constant updates. And remember, vote early. This BSA is a part of Every Voice, Every Vote, a collaborative project of the Lenfest Institute for Journalism with lead support provided by the William Penn Foundation. Learn more at www.everyvoice-everyvote.org. Editorial content is created independently of the project's donors. In honor of our 20th anniversary, WURD presents a new podcast archiving our history and the history of our beloved city. Vintage Word Season 1 is a weekly journey into the Word archives, reconnecting with classic shows and beloved hosts. Tune in this Sunday at 11 a.m. for a vintage episode of The Pursuit of Truth with Reggie Bryant. That's Vintage Word this Sunday at 11 a.m. only on WURD. Progressive Black Talk Media. Word Radio is happy to provide our listeners with the opportunity to participate in contests and win prizes. This is a reminder of our contest rules. All participants must be 18 years of age or older. Depending on the contest, persons may win only one prize from the radio station per contest for every 30-day period. Some contests might also specify one winner per household or company. Prizes must be claimed within 14 days or by 12 noon, the day before the event, whichever is sooner, and must be accepted as is or forfeited. The radio station employees and their immediate relatives, sponsor employees and their immediate relatives, live remote sponsor employees and their immediate relatives, and any other media employee are ineligible to win prizes. Thank you for participating and for listening to WURD progressive black talk media what is love you're listening to love and life on WURD progressive black talk media I think Hey there, family. Welcome back. You're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media, on air and online at wordradio.com. You know, that's WURD radio.com. We are joined by none other than Catherine Marie Charlton, who is the executive director of Musicopia and Dancing Classrooms Philly. Catherine, before we continue our conversation, we have a caller on the line. So I would love to invite our caller to join the conversation. Hello there. Hello there. This is Ron. I'm enjoying your program, but I want to talk about the instrument before the instrument. And Cal, you made reference to the little child with the beating on the on the on the bucket. 
Yes. But you see, my friend, it was you, divine order, the divine that's in you acknowledged that child to take a little time out. That's teaching. Do you know the story of Les Brown? Do you know his story? Well, when he was very, very young, they labeled him as being an unlearned man. We taught him some old crap like that. Do you know the story of Mother Hill? Mother Hill out in New York, what she did with the least of these. I say this, they, you know, they, that, that class that you would beloved was very fortunate to have the tuning to that person acknowledge your divineness, man. That's what, myself, I'm going on 80 years of being at the Dunbar School. Mm. I was a sad child. But because in that school there, with the lady that raised me, put me in the hands of this lady that taught me at the age of, I, I must say, when I was nine or something, to learn mm. me a poem, because I was having problems. And because of this, kindness and politeness, divineness she gave me. I say that poem today. So I'm saying all this to say this. What is teaching? What is education? Education is a significant thing. But when we are very fortunate to have kind people and divine people like you, Cal, and the lady that's there, what happens after the instrument is laid down? Because what you do in the beginning, man, can change and make their life a difference in their lives. And then I heard you talk about one of your students down there where the child was having problems with, 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 with the mother, with the family or something like that. And you embraced that child with your words, ma'am, giving him something maybe he didn't get at home. And that's so important. Compassion with our young people. They're not bad. They're, they're not none of that. But if they can take someone that showed them compassion, I can tell you story after story, which I won't do. Where the kindness in our neighborhoods, where people that was all in confusion and stuff, and somebody came along and showed them compassion, they went on to do some beautiful things in life. So may you be blessed, both of y'all. Speak to your children. Let them know that you care for them, and they, that divineness will pick it up. Because what you gave that child, man, it'll last him the rest of his life, beating on the drum, but his heart will beat for other people too. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ron. Thank you. I, I can't thank you enough on behalf of Catherine and myself for those kind words. It really does mean the world. It does. It, it does. really does. Thank you. And Carol, I do have to say, um, last year you were also asking about how we select our teachers the school that we sent you into last year, they had just gone through a whole lot on top of what all the individual kids were going through. The school had gone through something altogether and we knew that we needed to send a mother figure in. And that is why we <laughs> sent you in. Yeah. And, and, and it's all about uh, passion. It really is. It's about hearing the voices. I mean, because as human beings, we all just want to be heard. We do. And we these do. these little ones, they're not getting heard enough, right? And it takes that teacher with that compassion, that divine channeling, that, uh, that recognition. Um, like you said, you tried all the different instruments. You had the persistence to continue trying all the different instruments. Other teachers would have given up. <clears throat> I would, mm, you know. It saddens me, the reality of that. I would like to believe that they would not, but it the reality of it does sadden me. But I'm just happy that I was able to reach him. I'm, I'm, I was, I'm happy about that. And, and um, as a result, I wanted to shed a light on Musicopia for our family members because I know, like I tell you, I tell you all the time, so our babies are hurting. There's so many. And when I say our I mean, children, I don't family. I want to be clear because I, some of you might be saying, is she just talking about black babies? Is she talking? No, I'm talking about babies, all of our babies. I'm talking about uh, it, babies from every spectrum, from every walk of life, from every walk of life. Um, I, I've been fortunate and blessed to, uh, to meet and work with children from all over, all over the world. 
as a result of mesocopia. And I mean black and brown, I mean yellow, I mean tan, I mean white, I mean, you know, from wherever they come, you know, that's what I'm talking about when I say our babies. You know, I, I love all the babies. So that's what I mean when I say that. But um, so musicopia, what kind of programming, if you could, and I talked about bucket drumming. Yeah. I talked about um, having instruments in the schools. But I know you, you did mention two of the programs that um, musicopia Oh, yeah, you were asking if they were all in the schools and I was starting to go through. Um, mm -hmm. So we have our in-school programming, uh, the after-school drum lines, the orchestra. And um, I'm actually really excited to say we just partnered, signed a contract with Carnegie Hall for the Carnegie Hall Lullaby Project. Have you heard of this, Carol? No, I have not. Oh, my goodness. So Carnegie Hall out of New York City. Yes. Carnegie Hall. They've been doing for over a decade, they've been doing a lullaby project um, across the country, and they've been in Philadelphia for the last few years. And Musicopia is the new partner where we're partnering professional musicians with parents, caregivers, mm -hmm. grandparents, with toddlers age 18 months to uh, 18 to 36 months. So if any of your listeners have a toddler in your life, uh, we are looking for families um, who want to do a six session online course on how to write a song for your little one. What? And then you get okay. to record it with a professional artist. Okay. Um, yes. Family, wait a minute, because I know we have to take a short commercial break in a minute, in a minute. But when we come back, Catherine, I'm going to ask you if you will provide, uh, finish that story, number one, but provide the information on how our family members could have access to this and what they need to do, all of that, because I've not yet asked you to do that. But I want you, family, to stay with us um, because we're talking about music and its effect on us, on our kids, mm -hmm. on our families. We're talking about, you know, we know music is a universal language and we're talking about that language in and of itself. If you've just joined us, you're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media on air and online at wordradio.com. That's WURD radio.com. Um, Catherine was just mentioning to us Something I that surprised was you because you didn't know. You really that. did. <laughs> you really did. You really did. And I want this for our families. I want this for yeah. our babies. I want them to have this opportunity because that's what we, you know. I, I find so much joy in uh, having. Like our babies love to write songs. They love, love, love. And when I, when I talk with the parents, the parents say, "Well, I wish I oh that was something we could do together." And you know, so now that they can, mm -hmm. I'm glad you can share that with them. Listen, we're going to um, like I said, we're going to take a minute. And um, we'll be right back, okay? Struggling to pay your water or sewer bills? New Jersey's low-income household water assistance program can help you avoid service disruptions, restore services, pay reconnection fees, and stay up to date on payments. Don't get shut off. Apply for the low-income household water assistance program today. Call 211 or... Visit waterassistance.nj.gov. What are you waiting for? If you've been enjoying the information and interviews WURD provides every day or come out to our community events, it might be time to become a member. This year marks the 20th anniversary of WURD, and there's no better time to join the forward movement. Sign up or renew your sustaining membership at just $90 or your digital membership for just $5 a month. Join online at wordradio.com forward slash membership or pick up the phone and give us a call at 215 425 7875 press 4 for assistance the time to join is now what am i waiting for did you know Henry Oswa Tanner, the first internationally known African-American painter, lived and studied right here in Philadelphia as the first black student admitted to the prestigious Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts. Tanner broke barriers with his innovative moving paintings and influenced generations of artists around the world. To find out more about the efforts to preserve his legacy and North Philadelphia childhood home, visit the tannerhouse.org, a message from the friends of the Tanner House. We know the world is crazy. 
There's a never ending stream of negativity constantly flowing by our ears. We need daily reminders that joy is essential. Word Radio offsets the awful with daily words of joy and empowerment. These are on-air messages meant to uplift our spirit. We invite you, the word listener, to share your words of joy and empowerment with us. You can read a brief poem, share a favorite inspirational quote, an empowering story, or a passage from a book. Just call 215-425-7875, extension 107, and leave your words of joy and empowerment on the voicemail. Please make sure your message is one minute or less. It will be helpful to use a timer to stay on track. We look forward to broadcasting your words of joy and empowerment. We are WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. We're bringing joy and power to the people. This is Word Radio, 900 AM and 96.1 FM, WURD, Philadelphia. Celebrating 20 years of progressive black talk media. Streaming online at wordradio.com and the Word Radio app. Uh, Let me tell you something, and don't you ever forget it. Success is nothing without someone you love to share it with. You're listening to Love and Life with Carol Riddick on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. Hey there, family. Welcome back. You're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media on air and online at wordradio.com. That is WURD radio.com. We're talking with none other than Catherine Marie Charlton, who is the executive director of both Musicopia and Dancing Classroom Philly. Before the break, <clears throat> Catherine sprung something on me, y'all. Okay, so now please give us all the information that we need so that we can participate. Yes, so the Carnegie Hall Lullaby Project in partnership with Musicopia in Philadelphia, we are um, kicking off a few um, groups of families um, for April and May. So we are collecting people who are interested in creating music in partnership with a little one age 18 to 36 months, we ask that the adult participant be the primary caregiver, but it can be a grandparent, it can be a parent, a primary guardian, whoever that is, but who spends the most time with the child. Mm -hmm. Um, It is part of a National Endowments for the Arts research study. Um, And so we're looking to uh, fill out groups of families uh, that are interested in participating and also answering questions about the experience okay, um, and, and how it impacted uh, your relationship with the child, if it did, right? Um, but it's a um, six session online. Uh, we're gonna kick off in person and then we'll have six sessions online uh, with a professional artist. You get paired up with a professional artist to help wow. write your own lullaby and then you get to record it with the artist. And then later this year, there will be an opportunity to perform it with a live band too. Oh, wow. Yeah, and if you don't get into this round, we're gonna expand and have more in the fall as well. So definitely, if you're interested, um, I'm gonna give you the contact info in a moment, um, reach out and we'll um, be in, t- in communication about what the opportunities are. So is there a fee? No, it's free, all free. Yeah, super important. So we wouldn't do it otherwise. You, well, I have to let our family members know. Yeah. So you partnered with Carnegie Music Hall. Car- I can't. First of all, Carnegie Hall. Yeah, I've been practicing. You know the joke. <laughs> How do you get to <laughs> Carnegie Hall? <laughs> You've been practicing. Been practicing. So, family, <laughs> you you can you can uh, take advantage of this opportunity if this is something you have been wanting to do. You've been saying, "I want to write a lullaby with my little one." I think that's an awesome idea. That oh, that's an off, that's an awesome gift to a grandparent, or from a grandparent to a parent, or you know, vice versa, a caregiver, any of that. That's an awesome gift. That's wonderful. How did you guys come up with that one? Well, Carnegie Hall has been doing it in in. They did a pilot program in Philadelphia 
okay. years ago um, in partnership with World Cafe Live. Um, and World Cafe Live is continuing to be a partner for the in-person venues. Um, and then Musicopia is going to be the partner on um, the artist side oh, of it. Wow. Um, not only we're going to be expanding into um, additional artists in the fall, like I said, it'll be expanding out. But this is something that Musicopia does all the time is uh, find artists who are the right match for the families um, and, and pair people up and create music together. So when you say that, does Musicopia typically pair, typically pair an artist with a family or is it just no, typically program? we've been with schools? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but it is a central part of our mission, this pre-K uh, little ones. We mm -hmm. have always um, uh, sent teachers into um, daycares and pre-K programs. Um, maybe it's pre-K through sixth grade. Um, it's but it's typically in a group environment with the little ones. OK. Um, and we did um, update our mission this past year and specifically mention pre-K because it was so, so important to us because it's so important that we follow a child through their growth. Yeah, yeah that makes yeah. sense. So that it was a natural so pairing, a natural pairing. And we're very excited because um, I keep leading up to this and keep getting <laughs> sidetracked, but we're doing more and more community events where we're partnering with the Free Library of Philadelphia and, and sending our artists into libraries throughout the city. Um, we've been through um, with many museums in the city as well. We just did a whole series with the Kimmel Cultural Campus, the, the Family Fun Days, which were all free programs for families to come to. Mm. Um, but the libraries in particular, we're excited about because then we can be in the libraries that are right near the schools. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And then now with the Lullaby Program, it, we really want the music to be the experience for the, the school neighborhood and family and community. I love that. I love that. Family, uh, if you have just joined us, welcome to the top of the second hour of Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media on air and online at wordradio.com. That's wurdradio.com. We do have a caller on the line mm -hmm. that I would love to have join the conversation. Rick, are you still there? Hi, Hi, this is uh, Rick calling you from Germany. Hi, Rick. Welcome. And hello to your guest. Hello. I would ask you if, uh, if we have so much money in America for war, how do you expect them to find money for the arts, to put the arts back in both public private and religious schools? That's an interesting question. Yeah. Well, well, I will ask you that. So the funding for Musicopia, from where does the funding come? Because that, that would apply to Rick's question. Yeah, so yeah. It, it comes from um, a, a large variety of sources, um, everything from private foundations, um, such as one of our primary sponsors is the William Penn Foundation. Uh, who's really um, deeply involved in, in the Philadelphia community. Um, uh, individual donors, people who want to see um, music uh, and dance in mm -hmm. their grandchildren's schools, um, we, we get that. Um, we have um, school principals who do have arts funding, but they might not have the music teacher so mm -hmm. we can pair them with the artist. And so the school principal does have the funding in, in their school budget, um, but we just help make it easy for them. Um, and you look you look like you have an additional question, Carol. I do. So there is yeah. their government funding. I yes, think exactly. So that was the other piece I was going to say. There absolutely okay. is government funding. Mm -hmm. um, so so yes, the, the Philadelphia Cultural Fund is a, a really a gem uh, in our region um, that really it's, comes from the city government. Um, and is really focused on hundreds of arts and culture institutions um, mm -hmm. throughout the city, uh, making sure that the money is getting into the hands of the organizations who are on the ground doing the work. Um, Rick, was that an answer to your question? I, I just have a, a light follow-up short story. Okay. Uh, first, I want to say thank you to the, to the guest for her work in bringing music to young people. Um, but um, there was a young man in my life who recognized I was down and out around 1986, and he just brought me a cassette copy 
of Peter Gabriel's Soul album. Mm -hmm. And on that album, there's a song, Don't Give Up. I think John, John Legend has remade that, that track. Um, but music is powerful, and in good hands, it lifts the soul. Mm -hmm. Indeed. 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 I don't think there's a truer I have that on. song going through my head now. I'm going to yeah. be singing it all night. It's an amazing song. Thank you for that story. It is. Rick, thank Bye -bye, you. Ladies. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining the conversation and for that story, that amazing story. Um, and, and for the questions that you asked, because that was a, that was definitely a good question. I've never bothered to ask you from where uh, the funding came for Musicopia. Um, yeah. That, you, that, before we go on, I want to make sure I give the contact info for the Lullaby program. Thank if you. If people want to participate in that, um, Nathan Reifenberg is our program director, and you can email him at Nathan, N-A-T-H-A-N, at musicopia, M-U-S-I-C-O-P-I-A, dot net. And you can call or text 215-268-6255. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for that. And I'm glad you did uh, because I was about to ask another question and I've got so many things going through yeah. my head. Uh, um, <laughs> um, thank you, Rick, for that question about funding, because that is an important question. And he's right. You know, we're living in a day and age now where war is is at the forefront of everybody's mind and brain because of everything that we're seeing and all of the information that is being fed um, to us about yeah. what our government is doing. So it feels good to yeah. know that there well, is. So, yeah. So in addition to the Philadelphia Cultural Fund, mm -hmm. we get funding from the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts mm -hmm. um, to support these programs. And then this year, Dancing Classrooms Philly just got an, a grant from the National Endowments for the Arts um, to bring programs to African-American serving schools specifically. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. So the National Endowments for the Arts, and that's the name of their program. Um, and so that uh, we're bringing those programs into the William Penn School District. So I have a question. Yeah. If, if there is one of our family members that is saying, you know what, I really love this programming. I really, I want to know if uh, my grandchild or my child has access or can have access to it. Is it a program that the school can request or is, how does that work? How does the, how does Musicopia? Yeah, absolutely. So on our website on musicopia.net, um, there's information and it typically is school-based, but again, if family members want to reach out to us mm -hmm. um, and say, Hey, my, my child or my grandchild's at this school. Can you find out our, my programming team will reach out to the school and find out more information about what they do have like mm -hmm. uh, for mm -hmm. example we've gone into a um, school district for example chester upland school district uh where we um, went in and we did an inventory of all the instruments for them because there were so many so much turnover in the staff they didn't even know for sure where all the different musical instruments were or what program mm -hmm. they could do with it this was several years ago mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so we went in and helped um bring everything into one place and do an assessment for what the music programming could be um, and wow. that's a district where we've been for 25 years. And Leon Jordan Sr. has been one who's been in that district a lot for us with bucket drumming. It's very popular. You, and I, I want to share, too, that uh, because I mentioned bucket drumming, but it's not just bucket drumming. There was, um, um, was it Gloria? Gloria Galante, who's a, a harpist. Yes. Who participates, some of our students, like some of our students have asked me, okay, Miss Carol, can can we have a, a harpist? Can we have a flautist? Can we have, you know, a ukulele? Anyone that plays ukulele? Well, like they, Liz, Lizzo has made everyone <laughs> want to play the flute. That's for yeah. sure, right? Yeah. yeah. No, and I love it though. I love yeah. it because our kids are learning, number one, about the individual instruments. Um, you know, at one point in time, some babies just said, okay, well, there's some music. I don't know what they're playing or what they're doing, but now they're identifying the instruments and the oh, sounds that they make. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they'll say to me in class, oh, did you hear, did you hear uh, the percussionist? And I'll say, you don't know anything about percussion. They'll say, uh-huh. When he played the Congos and I'll say, oh, 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 you know, and then they laugh and, um, but it, but it really does feel good because our kids are paying attention to what they're seeing and what they're hearing. And now with um, Musicopia, they have they too have the opportunity to do the same thing. Yeah. I want to share another story with our family members. 
Um, I, I was telling you, well, I was saying earlier, if you missed this story, um, we had identified one of uh, one of my babies, my, my baby girl. She was an extraordinary drummer, extraordinary. And it was just a natural born talent that she had with playing drums. And uh, Musicopia provided her with a drum set, with a drum kit, a beautiful drum kit. And I'm saying this because I, I'm telling you, family members, you know, it's a wonderful and beautiful opportunity for our babies to be able to live out, yeah. their, you, you know, to, you when, know, especially should, when they have I it. explain to your listeners where the drum kit came from. Please do. Yes. Because I was getting to that. I was getting to Okay, that. thank you. Yeah, so we have um, uh, our gift of music uh, instrument donation program. And we have drop-off sites throughout the region, and there's a list of them on the musicopia.net website. Mm -hmm. um, and we collect instruments that perhaps you have a child who played an instrument in middle school and they went off to college and they haven't touched it in seven years and they're saying, I'm never gonna touch that again. And it's sitting there, mm -hmm. we can use it because we will take any instrument um, that you are ready to let go of um, and I say that very intentionally because musical instruments are something that are attached to us personally. You see mm -hmm. my um, my keyboard back here. Well, my name is hiding it, but my <laughs> keyboard is there. Um, it's something that is a part of us. And I recognize that, we recognize that, that it's not so easy to let go of an instrument sometimes. Um, but we take great care with them. We will Me repair too. them as needed. We have um, generosity of funders who uh, give us the money to uh, repair the instrument. Sometimes when people give us the instrument, they'll give us $50 along with it so that we can then um, send it to a repair shop. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll make sure that it gets right into the hands of a music teacher who has starting up a new program, and in this case, um, right to an individual student that a teacher has identified with talent. Um, and, and the range is, varies greatly. Um, everything from introductory band instruments to also extremely high level professional instruments. Uh, we had a family recently where their mother, um, Doris Loder, had been a teacher in the school district of Philadelphia for probably 40 years. And she played in the Delaware Symphony. Mm. Uh, and when she passed away, unfortunately, um, they gave her professional viola and violin to Musicopia. We were able to place them in the hands of students who were going on to music conservatory. So, for example, one of our alum, um, Justin Williams, he's a student at the Peabody Conservatory. Mm. It's one of the most elite classical conservatories in the country. And he's playing this viola that had been gifted to Musicopia. Um, Wow. We just wrote a, an interview story with him. Um, there's more about his story on our website. Wow. Catherine, oh, can yeah. you please tell our family members once again what the uh, website is, too, for yeah, those who want to find out more information? Yeah. Musicopia.net. Can you spell that for some yes, of our family members? And it's, and it's on the screen. If you can see the screen, it's some right of our there. members are listening. Exactly. <laughs> um, so I'm going to say it. it's music, M U S I C. O P I A Musicopia. Yeah. Yeah. Dot net. I love that. And you said you guys are coming up on your 50th anniversary. We that? are. Okay. We are. Yeah. Wow. So is there any special programming? Is there anything special going yes. on for the 50th? Yes. So please come to our website and sign up for our, our e-blast. We don't send too many. We promise we won't flood your, your inboxes. But yes, there's going to be a whole series of events and celebrations through the year. They're going to be community based. They're going to be lots of student performances. And it's going to culminate in the end of the year with a huge to do, which I can't wait to share, but I can't oh, write it. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm excited. I cannot wait to hear about it. Yeah. So, yeah, so please sign up for the email list um, to get the information. I think, um, keep me honest here, community engagement team, but I think <laughs> that eBlast goes out every other month. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so will there be information about all programming, including Dance in Classrooms Philly? Or Yes. 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 Yeah. So any, any information that, uh, any information, about Dancing Classrooms Philly will be on the musicopia.net website as well. 
Well, I would recommend you go also go to dancingclassroomsphilly.org. <laughs> Thank you for the prompt, Miss Carol. Um, yeah, it, we're actually, it's an unusual situation. Um, it's not very common. We're actually it's affiliate organizations, sister organizations. Um, okay. We share an executive director, myself, and we share a board of directors who oversee both organizations, but they really are two different organizations working together on a frequent basis. Um, mm -hmm. And, and sharing the love and the joy. Um, but yes, there is a separate e-blast for Dancing Classrooms Philly. And when I said Musicopia was every other month on the off months is Dancing, is dancing Philly. Class. So you get one once a month if you sign up for both. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and now I want to go back to uh, the conversation about the libraries, the partnership mm -hmm. that you all have with the libraries. Are, what libraries in particular, how, would, how will we find out? Um, I, I guess we could go to the website, but... Uh, is it, I know it's not, it can't be every library. So are there specific not, libraries? Not that, um, uh, you're quizzing me here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I must admit, I don't know off the top of my head. I know that okay. the Free Library of Philadelphia has specific funding that they, they recently um, received to do arts programming throughout the network. Okay. Um, and I know that we are, we're, trying where we can to place the programs in the neighborhoods in the vicinity of the schools where we are, but not always. Mm -hmm. um, um, so it is throughout the city. Um, I would imagine you can go to the free library website and see all of the arts and culture programming, not just Musicopias, because I know mm -hmm. they do an amazing job. They do. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they really do. Yeah, I was trying to make sure our family members had all the information that they uh, they could possibly want since we've been talking about um, the programming that Musicopia offers. I wanted them to be able yeah. to look We do list all of our public programming on our website too. So that is definitely okay. the best place to start. Um, and then you can always reach out to us through the email on the website as well and ask questions. So, you know what I just thought about with Dancing Classrooms Philly, when there is a ballroom competition, is that mm -hmm. open to the public? Absolutely. Yes. I was trying to remember. I thought there were people in the bleachers. I yes. can't remember. Yes. It's, it's, oh, okay. So they would be able to come. Okay. So family, I was telling you about the ballroom dancing competitions. I, I told you I broke down and cried because I wanted every baby to win. I really did. But I think it's, it's, a, it's something that you should see. I definitely think it's something that you should witness because our kids are, um, they're out here dancing. I yeah. mean, when I tell you so, they're, I mean, with a level of maturity that you would not, an etiquette that you yes. just, you would be so proud to witness. So I'll get in trouble if I don't share some dates with you. Ms. Thank Carol. you. Thank okay, you. so May 21st okay. is, it's a Sunday. That's the Dancing Classrooms Philly Grand Final. And that's going to be at the University of the Arts um, at the Levitt Auditorium on May 21st. And the information, again, on the dancingclassroomsphilly.org website. Okay. Um, and that is the best um, place for people to come and experience the joy. Um, and then also coming up with Musicopia, May 4th, we have an all-city drum lines. Um, we're working in partnership with the School District of Philadelphia. There's new now, in addition to all city orchestra, um, which brings students from all over the city playing classical orchestra music. We now have an all city drum line, which Musicopia is happy to be a partner on. And there is a showcase on May 4th. I believe it that's girls at Girls High on May 4th. Um, but again, the details on the website. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and that's a Thursday, I believe. Um, and then June 10th is our orchestra concert. That's at First Unitarian Church on June 10th. That's a Saturday. Um, and that um, program is amazing. So, for example, we just had a concert in February with the orchestra where we did a world premiere composition by Jay Flewellen, who got a grant from Black Music City to write a symphony for Musicopia in honor of McCoy Tyner. So it was the McCoy Tyner Symphony. Um, and Musicopia String Orchestra students premiered one of the movements last year and another one just in February. I think the third one will be in June if I'm, but again, more details on eBlast. Yes, yes, yes. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. Once again, can you tell our family members the websites? I just want to make yes. sure they're able to get this information. Yes. It's musicopia.net. That's music, M U S I C. O-P-I-A dot N-E-T. 
And dancingclassroomsphilly.org. That's right. Dancing classrooms with an S, mm -hmm. philly.org. I love it, love it, love it. Oh, so family, oh, if you have just joined us, you missed a lot, but we're glad you're here now, okay? <laughs> you're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, progressive Black talk media, on air and online at wordradio.com. That's wurdradio.com. We're going to take a short commercial break, but when we come back, we're going to talk to our family members who are joining us on the phones, okay? So stay with us because we will be right back. SEPTA is hiring. As an employee, you will earn competitive compensation and great benefits, including medical, dental, prescription, and a pension. Visit jobs.septa.org to apply today. Here's what you missed on Wake Up With Word. So the indictment of Donald Trump has been unsealed, and we now know he's been charged with 34 felony counts. Though the statement of facts is publicly available, the evidence is not. Still, Trump's lawyers and backers claim the case against Trump is weak. Lynn, what do you see in the facts of this case? Well, you correctly noted that the facts on this case were not listed in the indictment. The indictment just lists 34 counts of falsifying records in the first degree. And it's essentially the same language. So when you hear you know, the media pundits say, oh, well, there's nothing in there. It's a weak case. We didn't, we, we expected to see more. Well, the prosecutor's not going to throw all his cards down until trial. In one way, it is true that the indictment that was released to the public is very white. However, we know what the dude did. He had an affair with that porn star, obscured the fact that he had this affair, an affair that he had when his wife was pregnant with his youngest son. He paid her $130,000. And then to conceal that payment, he had it done through legal expenses. So he did falsify business records. Tune in to Wake Up With Word with Solomon Jones every Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. Only on WURD. Progressive Black Talk Media. Pollution from trucks is a public health crisis. Diesel burning trucks belch dangerous levels of pollution. And communities living near ports and along freight corridors breathe especially high levels of this dirty air. But this crisis has a solution. My name is Sasan Sadat and I work for Earth Justice. I'm working to clean up our air quality, particularly for communities that bear the burden of diesel pollution. For the sake of our lungs, our health, and our climate, the future of trucking in this country has got to be zero emissions. Until then, I will never rest. Earth Justice is a national legal nonprofit defending the environment and people's health. Earth Justice is fighting to save lives, protect our climate, and strengthen our economy through the shift to zero emissions. If clean air matters to you, visit us at earthjustice.org. Earth Justice, because the earth needs a good lawyer. Wait a minute. Take a breath and breathe in positivity. Here are words of joy and empowerment from Word Radio. To Black Women by Gwendolyn Brooks. Sisters, where there is cold silence, no hallelujahs, no hurrahs at all, no handshakes, no neon red or blue, no smiling faces, prevail. Prevail across the editors of the world who are obsessed, self-honeying, and self-crowned in the seduced arena. It has been a hard trudge with fainting, bandaging, and death. There have been startling confrontations. There have been tramplings, tramplings of monarchs and of other men. But there remain large countries in your eyes, shrewd sun, the civil balance, the listening secrets, and you create and train your flowers still. I'm Delilah Wilson Scott. This joy and empowerment vignette was brought to you by Comcast. What is love? You're listening to Love and Life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. I think I know what love is. Hey, family, you heard that right. Welcome back. 
You're tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, progressive Black talk media on air and online at wordradio.com. You know that's wurdradio.com. We are joined by none other than Catherine Marie Charlton, the executive director of Musicopia and Dancing Classrooms Philly. Before the break, I explained that we were going to go to our phone lines because we want all of our family members to join the conversation. Are you still there, Reverend Parr? Yes. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, I, I, I could feel your tears when Brother Ron was giving you the compliment. I was in the car. I'm the first time. This is my first time calling on your program. And uh, I, I just really want to uh, uh, second what Brother Ron was saying about you because when you kept calling them your babies, uh, and our children should be referred that way instead of kids, that touched my heart. One of the things about me, uh, I believe in giving people their flowers while they can smell them. Because when you're dead and gone, people will come up and give a whole bunch of accolades to the family, and you'll never hear them. So tonight, and today just happens to be my granddaughter's second birthday. Oh. Oh. First grandbaby. And she's a singer, so I can oh. call and, and get some information on that uh, um recording and, and find out how to go about it. Because my wife, is a school, she's a music teacher, and she's, she, she was a part of the Copia because she said they had a five-year grant, but uh, the school district is, is terrible. They, they're they're mm-hmm. really taking out of the schools the music program. Oh. And it's just sad because the violence in the schools, I mean, she comes home and she cries almost every other day. I believe it. You know, because they need it in the schools. They do. They do. Yeah. They, they really, first, I, I'm overwhelmed right now. There was now. a lot in that. Just, I, I, I want to say thank so you. Much. Yeah. I, I want to say thank you. Thank you very much for acknowledging and 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 sharing that um that it it means the world to me because i I do love our babies and I mean it when I say it and and they know it, and that's all that matters to me they know it but um Catherine, would you please share with Reverend Parr the information about yes. the uh, Carnegie Hall program, please yes, um so you can email nathan n a t h a n at musicopia.net. Um, you can also call or text the number 215-268-6255. And I mentioned before that we're um, doing um, several families now, um, I think 24 families right now, but it will also continue in the fall. So if for any reason, you don't get into this um, cohort, um, there'll be more opportunities and we want your name on the list so that we understand who wants it. And Reverend Parr, please, um, if you would, I'm going to ask if you would leave your information with our show's producer, not on the air, so that I can make sure you get this information, if that's all right with you. Oh, family, <clears throat> if you don't know by now, I, I, I am, I'm a love bug because I love us. You hear me? I love us. I love us. And I can't stress it to you enough. And I love our babies even more. And I mean that when I say it. And uh, the programming that I bring to you is because I care and I want us all to do well. They say when you know better, you do better. And I'm hopeful that just, I, I, I don't know, whatever it is, if there's something that you see, something that you hear, something that you feel, that it ignites you in some way, that there is a spark for you or in you in some way, 
that makes you want more. I'm okay, baby. Thank you so much. My fur child, thank you. I'm okay. My fur mm -hmm. child. <laughs> um, so I'm hoping that it ignites something in you, that it 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 just sparks you to want more and to want better and to want, I, I want us all to help each other because I tell you every single show that we are all we have. And I say, be good to you, but be good to those around you. I say it every single show because I mean it, because I mean it, because I mean it. So Catherine, mm -hmm. thank you for coming. But also if you could share one more time while I get myself together, um, you're making me cry now. I'm too. sorry. I'm that really no, touched but it, me. No, it but really it's touched important. Me. It is so, so important what the Reverend just shared. That is what's going on in our schools. And, you know, if we can help each other, if we can figure out how to help each other have that light, if we can help our babies. Uh, you, it, you, you just yeah. don't know. You know, when you, when you, I've come across so many of our babies and I don't want to tell their, their, all of their stories, but just know that a lot of our babies are in pain. A lot of our babies are dealing with a lot. Some of our babies are dealing with adult situations and they're coming to school and they don't, they don't have an outlet. They don't have an outlet and they want someone to share with. They want someone to talk to and they need a way to get through it. They need a way. So that is why this, this program is so important to me because they get to, they have an outlet through music. If nothing else, if, if, if it's not me, they have an outlet through music. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> um, if you could, huh? I'm going to get myself together. Y'all you hear me? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, never apologize. Yeah. No. I, I want to make sure they know it, it, it means so much. We, to we me. love you so much, Carol. Your family loves you. I thank y'all. Yeah. It, it means so much. Catherine, um, I'm going to ask one of our family members would like to know if you could share Nathan's email address one more time and the telephone number. Oh, absolutely. Um, and he's going to wonder why he's getting all this. <laughs> I hope his inbox is flooded tomorrow because that will also show that we need this more and more. Right. Um, so Nathan, N-A-T-H-A-N at musicopia.net. That's the word music, M-U-S-I-C. O P I A dot N E T Nathan at musicopia dot net and the telephone number you can call or text this number is two one five two six eight six two five five and that is to participate in the uh, Carnegie Hall Musicopia Lullaby Project. It's the Carnegie Hall Lullaby Project in partnership with Musicopia in Philadelphia. Yeah. And that's also funded with lead support by the William Penn Foundation. I mentioned the William Penn Foundation before. They're an extraordinary um, foundation that is doing deep work uh, in the city and really cares deeply that the programming is coming from the community and what um, the community wants and needs. So again, the more Nathan's inbox is flooded tomorrow, the more we can come back and say, hey, we need to hire more artists. We need to pair up artists with the families. Please help. I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that program. Like I said, I think I think that's an awesome gift for any family, for any family member. And I think it's a beautiful thing to share. It's such a beautiful thing to share. You know, um, I say it all the time when we all say it. It's universal. Music is a universal language. So what better way than to be able to give that gift family if you have just if you've just joined us you are tuned in to love and life on wurd progressive black talk media on air and online at wordradio.com that is wurd radio Dot com. We've been talking with none other than Catherine Marie Charlton, who is the executive director of both.
Musicopia and Dance in Classrooms, Philly. And I wanted Catherine to come on to the show to talk with you about both of the organizations because I see what they do. I, I see how our babies benefit. I see how our babies grow and how they enjoy it so much, you know, and it offers a whole new world to them. The programming that is offered through Musicopia and Dancing Classrooms Philly offers a whole new world to our babies. It's, it's, it's just a different, a different thing, which is awesome, which is awesome. And I wanted to be able to share that with you in case you were unaware, for those of you who are who are aware, that's a wonderful thing. I'm so happy to know that. But for those of you who were unaware, I wanted to share that with you because I think we should know that this is available to our babies. And if their school does not have programming that is offered by Musicopia, let's call them and say, hey, hey, we want them. We want our babies to be exposed to some different things in life. Yeah. Uh, now, with regard to dancing classrooms, Philly, I don't think I asked you about how that programming um, comes about. Is that also just with within the school system? I'm not sure if I asked. It, you. It's almost in, exclusively in schools. Yes, um, we have in the past couple of years also done some community programming um, at, at libraries again, um, also at some museums and arts festivals. Um, where we're doing intergenerational dance programming. Mm -hmm. um, we also um, will send teachers in to help classroom teachers. The Reverend mentioned his wife is a, is a teacher. Um, so we, we um, send our dance artists in to give the classroom teachers tools, movement tools that they can use in their classrooms. Um, again, to just really help in whatever way we can. Um, mm. We also expanded recently. I, I was talking earlier about the extraordinary journey that the that the students go through in terms of learning the eye contact and, and the touch and the mm -hmm. working together and teamwork. Um, we have expanded the definition in our mission beyond ballroom dance to broaden it to social dance because it really is that partner interaction that's at the crux of it. it it's just ballroom dance was the primary tool where it started, but mm -hmm. we are sending teachers in with hip hop and salsa. And mm -hmm. we had a high school request K-pop. Um, <laughs> so we, we actually have two K-pop teachers on our roster oh, right now. Wow. Um, yeah. So it's been a really amazing um, journey for us um, to really expand. Um, but again, at that mm -hmm. core, of what does it mean to to interact and dance with each other? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Family, if you're uh, if you're checking us out and you're saying, "Look, I have a question. I want to know this, or I want to know that, or I need to have this repeated," let us know. Let us know. You can reach us on our socials, as you know. You can also call us at two one five six three four eight zero six five. Or you can call us toll free at 1-866-361-0900. Um, I just think that you are amazing, Catherine, as you know. Mm -hmm. But I think that the programming is too. And as it, as it pertains to dance in class, uh, classrooms Philly. I was unaware of some of the other things that dance in classrooms Philly did. I, I was only aware of ballroom dancing, but yes. it feels so good to know that you guys are expanding programming with that too. And um, so will there be like you have programming uh, through Musicopia with libraries, with, with some of the libraries coming about, will there also be some uh, dancing programs available to us, to the public? Very possibly. Um, the Dancing Classrooms Philly um, curriculum is, is very codified and formal. And, and there's a very specific reason for that. Um, okay. It's because it is, again, I keep saying this word over and over, but I can't say it enough. It's about the journey that the students go through. Mm -hmm. So once we start shortening it or doing a one-time thing, it's fun. And yes, we get benefit from it and joy from it, but it's not the same as that 
beginning to end um, the integration. They're writing um, the students write essays about reflecting on their experiences. Um, oh. They'll also have tie-ins to again to their classroom work, um, learning about dances from different cultures and learning about the history of the countries where these dances come from. Um, the teacher might even reference math and and have um, the shapes that the students are making on the floor. Um, it really is a process where the dance becomes a part of them. I love that. Oh, I love that. Family, um, we're so glad that you're spending some time with us. We really, really, really are. And I love that we're talking about educating our babies in different ways. We're using music, we're using dancing, we're teaching them social skills as well. Um, another level of etiquette, um, exposing them to finer things and some cultured things in life. And I love, love, love being a part of that. Um, stay with us though, because we're going to take just a short commercial break and then we'll come back and, and talk about a few more things before we... Uh, before we end the show. <laughs> so stay with us though, because we'll be right back. Thank you. For more than a decade, Comcast has been committed to bridging the digital divide in Philadelphia and across the country. From connecting people to the internet to opening doors for the next generation of innovators, entrepreneurs, and storytellers, they are helping to create a future that benefits generations to come. Now, Comcast is expanding their efforts through Project Up, their comprehensive initiative to help build a future of unlimited possibilities. Backed by a $1 billion commitment to reach tens of millions of people over the next decade, Comcast is working to ensure all Philadelphians have the skills, resources, and opportunities they need to participate and excel in an increasingly digital world. This includes partnering with community experts to build a network of digital navigators, trusted individuals who help build awareness around initiatives like the government's Affordable Connectivity Program, and and teach critical digital skills to get more people online. Project Up, building a future of unlimited possibilities. Learn more at Comcast.com slash Project Up. Through Project Up, Comcast is committing $1 billion to build a future of unlimited possibilities. The job search can be a difficult and frustrating process. Words Livelihood Initiative was designed to help you find the right opportunity for your next professional move. Check out these recent openings posted on the Livelihood Job Board at WordWorks.com. Center in the Park Philadelphia is hiring a long-term care ombudsman, a director of social services and housing, and a housing counselor. The Neighborhood Progress Fund of Philadelphia is hiring a small business advisor, and the Chamber of Commerce for Greater Philadelphia is hiring an economic competitiveness administrator. For more information on these jobs and many others, go to wordworks.com and learn more about the Livelihood Initiative. Brought to you by Word Radio. Progressive. Black. Talk media. WURD Radio, Philadelphia's rock for the African-American community, social, political, economics, and beyond. My name is Dr. J. Stephen Blake of Blake Gastroenterology Associates. Catch me on second Sundays at 2 p.m. Colon cancer conversations and irritable bowel syndrome. Congratulations, WURD, on 20 years as our rock for the community. Stay connected on the go with the new and improved Word Radio app. Search Word Radio in your app store. Stream every show with increased clarity. Easily access Word TV, EcoWord, and Livelihood. Start or redo your four-word membership and buy Word swag. Remember, Black Media Matters. Get the new and improved Word Radio app today. Available on Google Play and the Apple App Store. You're listening to Love and Life with Carol Riddick on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. Hey there, family. Welcome back. You are tuned in to Love and Life on WURD, progressive Black talk media on air and online at wordradio.com. That's W-U-R-D, radio.com. It, 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 is, it, is, it has been 
my utmost pleasure to have this conversation um, about everything that we've discussed tonight as it pertains to you, Catherine, as it pertains to Musicopia and Dance in Classrooms Philly. I want to make sure our family members are well aware of all of the information, how they can reach, uh, well, how they can find out more about everything that uh, Musicopia and Dance in Classrooms Philly uh, are both doing. But before we get to that, is there anything that you would like to leave with us? Yeah, I just want to share that um, there are numerous uh, arts education organizations in the city of Philadelphia. I think mm -hmm. that um, it's really amazing the work uh, and every organization tends to have a different niche of how we're reaching the, the students, whether it's uh, a different neighborhood or a different mm -hmm. genre of music. Um, I'm just thinking um, I'm on the leadership team of the Philadelphia Music Alliance for Youth. Um, and that's an example of eight different music education organizations in the city who have banded together for the last six years. Um, and we have 50 students in the city, black and brown students who have a dream of becoming professional mu uh, classical musicians. Mm. And they're receiving lessons and advocacy and training on how to do auditions for uh, conservatory. Right. So that's just one example of the teamwork that is possible when we all share what we're doing in our passions and, and work together, because it really is all about the babies, as you say. It is. Thank, you know what, Catherine, thank you for sharing that, because I was unaware that you, you referenced. Is it P.M.A.Y.? P.M.A.Y. Yeah. The PMA Artist Initiative. Um, yeah, so, so 50 students in the city who are, are receiving this, and many of them have gone on. I mentioned uh, the one young man who's at the Peabody Conservatory, mm -hmm. but one alum um, just became assistant conductor of the Detroit Symphony. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, it's really incredible. And Philadelphia is really a leader in the country in these programs. Mm -hmm. um, my colleagues um, on this leadership team have been going to national conferences and always hear back that Philadelphia is the model for the collaboration and, and the way that we're all working together for the betterment of our children. I love that. I love, love, love that. Oh, see that, Catherine? See what I'm saying? All yeah. of this wonderfulness. I want to make sure for our family members who did not catch the information that you shared, um, if you could share with us one more time, the both the websites and the telephone information so they could yep. reach so, out. Yep, musicopia.net, music, M-U-S-I-C-O-P-I-A dot net. Um, also, Musicopia1974 on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook. Um, we have, we're on TikTok now. What? Um, so that's Musicopia and DCP. Um, <laughs> lots of fun on TikTok lately. Um, and then we have Dancing Classrooms with an S, Classrooms Philly, dancingclassroomsphilly.org, mm -hmm. O-R-G. And we're Dancing DCP on social media. OMG. Yeah. Did you just say you were on TikTok? Now? Oh, absolutely. Wait. <laughs> Wait, that tickles me. That really tickles me. That is the way of the world now. TikTok is the way of the world. Is. TikTok has become a channel for me. I, I watch I dancing, watch it right um, inspirational stories, uh, testimonials. Oh. Um, we're working on, we're going to be having student takeovers in the upcoming year. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. So if you're oh, on I can't TikTok, wait. Oh, I've got to check it out. It was Musicopia and DCP P. on TikTok. On TikTok. Okay. Mm -hmm. Family, I hope you got all of that. I hope you got all of that. But in any event, if you did not, feel free to email me at loveandlife at wordradio.com. And I will make sure you have all of that information. I promise you I will. If you did not, if you did not, uh, if there was anything you missed, anything, if it was a telephone number, if it was an email address, whatever it was, if it was, if it was something about a specific program that you'd like to know more about, um, just email me. Just say, Carol, what was this all about? Mm -hmm. Love and life at wordradio.com. Huh. This was a lot. This was, I love it. I love it. I, 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 I want to know um, what, now you were talking about PMA. I, I want to go back to PMAY. Mm -hmm. For one quick second before yeah. we begin our close. For PMAY, the 50 students that are participants, 
how do you acquire those students? Um, there's an open audition process. Um, okay. And as well as what we were mentioning earlier, where the teachers recognize the talent in the students. Um, and it's not just the innate talent. It's also the commitment and the passion and the dream of wanting to become a professional classical musician. That particular program is specifically um, uh, for dreaming of being an orchestra musician in the future, for example. Mm. Um, and it's also the commitment of the families and the support system um, that the that the people in their lives, their families in their lives, and I use family broadly, meaning the village, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. um, understands that this really is the passion and the dream of the child, of the baby, of our student, um, okay. and, and wants to set them on their way. And if they don't have that, we also provide that advocacy. Yeah. I love it. Now, uh, one thing I did not ask, because it, is there... Um... Is there funding? Some of, is there is there ever funding for some of the programs for the students? Like, is there is, is are these programs free? Are they all free? Is, is or is there funding available? So I guess that's a two parter. Well, from Musicopia, uh, all of the Musicopia student um, programs um, are free. Uh, our orchestra does have a tuition, but we never turn anyone away. We always welcome any student who wants to participate in the orchestra. Um, and then the PMA Artist Initiative. Um, has sliding scales um, uh, mm -hmm. for families, um, again, because it's about, uh, for the black and brown students going into a conservatory, this um, historically um, place where, where they need the colleagues, right? Mm -hmm. um, this community, um, the advocacy on what does it mean when you're going into this program. Um, so it, it's very um, tailored and specific, right? Um, Thank but you a lot of that. a lot of the other programs in the city, um, it's free or mm -hmm. it, 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 it varies. It, it, it all varies. Yeah. It does vary. But I wanted to be sure to ask that because, you know, we, we all want to know. We, yeah. we all want to know. So, OK, so I, I want to participate. But is it free or is there is there a fee? And if so, what is and it? And I would okay. say many of um, our colleague organizations, they all have programs where it's free. It, it, um you know, so so again, it varies even within an organization. It can vary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Understood. Family, uh, you know, you know what time it is. You know what time mm -hmm. it is. Uh, it is that time that uh, I began to get sad because I have to leave you. I enjoy spending time with you. I really do. I enjoy the conversations that we have, the discussions. Um, I enjoy it all, good, bad, and indifferent. Well, there's no bad in it, right? Because we're talking, we're sharing, and that's called growth. That's what I see that as. But family, as we wrap up tonight's episode, I, I want to extend my utmost gratitude to you uh, as you continue to support love and life. Um, special thanks to you, Catherine, our guest uh, for tonight, Catherine Marie Charlton, who is the executive director of both Musicopia and Dancing Classrooms Philly for sharing your time, for sharing your energy, for sharing your attention and all of the information that you shared with us. Um, once again, if you want to know about anything that Catherine shared tonight. If there was something that you missed, please feel free to email me because I will be more than happy to share the info with you. And you can do so by emailing me at loveandlife at wordradio.com. You know that's W-U-R-D radio.com. I want to thank the entire WURD family. Special thanks to Kayla J, though, just for just for making sure that I'm on top of things. Thank you so much. Thank you for making sure everything runs smoothly. Family, I tell you this all the time. We are all in this together. So be good to you, but be good to those around you. I want you to have a great night, okay? Be sure you join me Monday through Thursday, 7 through 9 p.m. ET for another edition of love and life on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media. Have a great night, everybody. <laughs>